Today we're going to talk old fart stuff. Uh, I'm old enough to have gone through conservatively 500 quadrajets in my 40 years. I mean, there was times where I was doing four or five a week. It was one a day. I mean, it was common as hell. So I learned a couple things that I wanted to share because I'm doing one right now. First time in a while I've had the opportunity to get into an old Rochester Quadrajet. And there's a couple of things that I'd like to share that I feel are important that you may not know. And so anyway, here goes. So uh, first thing you want to do is, of course, take it completely apart and clean up, clean everything up as good as you can. I just uh, dip tank. Uh, honestly, what I use is uh, just regular old purple power. You can buy it on different under different names. This one happens to be from Sam's Club, but I also buy it from O'Reilly. And I just have a can here, and I dip dip can. There's a distributor going in there right now, and uh, that's straight. That's 100% straight. That's a 50-50 mix right there. Now, what happens with 100% straight is it attacks aluminum. So when you pull the carburetor out, it's going to look awful. But I have a sandblast cabinet with some glass bead. And as long as you have access to a sandblaster, you're good to go. You can, don't worry about it, leave the, leave the carburetor in there for a day, pull it out, wash it off, and then you have to glass bead it. Or, you know, you could even use sand. And uh, just make sure you blow everything out real good. You want to get all the sand out of everything. You want to make sure that all the passageways, including the screw holes, are all clear. You want to pull your main jets out down in there. You want to take them out. That's down here. You want to get them out because there's a pocket down here, your, your main jet well, that could have debris in it, and especially if you're going to sandblast it afterwards, you know, sand could get in there. So you want to have them jets out. And then you want to have this. This here is the check ball for the accelerator pump. This, this screw, I'll just take it out and show you. This screw comes out and it has a pin on the end of it and there's a ball, there's a check ball in that hole so you got to make sure you, you don't lose that check ball and you want to drop that check ball back down into that hole before you put this accelerator pump back in. That is the only check ball in a quadrajet carburetor so you don't have too much worries there, you know, just that one. And then, basically that's it. You clean everything up. And a couple of the points here that I wanted to make. There's a seal here on your choke housing. You can see here I got a little grease on it. It's a little round rubber seal. Looks like that there. There's one there. And then there's one right behind this, this part here where that shaft that green shaft as it goes through the housing right here is another seal right there. You want to replace both of those and you want to put in the new plastic ferrule that goes between the body and this choke housing. Now why, do we, why are we worried about this? The reason we're worried about it is because this is the vacuum supply to this choke housing. There's a little hole right there and that puts the inside of this housing under under intake vacuum which then pulls heat into the choke this is your choke housing it pulls it through a through a uh, in the case of an Oldsmobile this is an Oldsmobile uh, but others others use the same principle it pulls hot air from the intake manifold and that hot air is what turns your choke off so if these seals aren't replaced you'll have a leak there <laughs> you'll have a vacuum leak and you won't get a good draw through your choke housing and your choke will never shut off or it'll be lazy shutting off. So 
those are important points that you want to cover. And really the last big one is the top. Okay, I don't know if you can see how I filed this top flat. Because what happens is over the years the bolts that hold the top of the carburetor down onto the body, okay, these tighten up into the, they go all the way down into your intake manifold. Over time they pull these corners down and it actually, the carburetor takes a bit of a warp. So you can see here where I took a big file, I put this thing in a vise, I clamp, I clamp it into a vise here and I take a big file and I go across, I go across that top to get to look to get this flat you know I just very carefully just keep filing it until I start to see evidence that I'm hitting here see now what happens if you don't do that you will if it's if it's too warped the gasket will not seal in these areas right here and this is critically important this is your air bleeds and the passageway for the fuel and everything that comes up through here to, to go to your nozzles so if you don't have a good clamp down here it's going to throw your fuel to air ratio all off and especially idle idle fuel air ratio will be not good and uh, you'll be fiddling around trying to figure out why can't I get it to idle right anyway that's a critical thing especially on an older quadrajet it's uh, uh, and then at the bottom there's not much to do there's not really anything to worry about here on the bottom um, this this model here is old enough to where the idle screws are already exposed they're not encapsulated the newer ones they block these idle screws off so you got to take a slit you, you, you run a you, they got a cap a, a hardened cap that goes over them so I just take a die grinder and I go in here and die grind it and then I get in from behind and tap it out and that that cap will come right out and then you'll have access to your mixture screws your idle mixture screws and when you put those idle mixture screws back in you run them all the way down and back them up about two turns and you'll be you'll be good uh, for a starting point um, I replaced I bought a whole kit for this one so it's not much money you replaced your accelerator pump diaphragm I've got to do that that's the little diaphragm there that goes on your on your accelerator pump that's this guy um, the other thing I do is I stake, I, I come in here with a screwdriver and a hammer, Let's see if I can show you this, and I stake like that, I don't know if you can see that, in three places I stake that down and just, just a little bit, you just want to knock the, you want to put a little stake in there ever so slightly. Now why? Because what happens is when you go to put your metering rods back in, there's a spring under here that's, that's going to want to push them up, push them out of there, and that little cap is all that holds them in there. See, there's a little, there's a little cap here that, I don't have the spring under them right now, but the spring is the spring is this one. And, and, and it's trying to push it's trying to push this up well that cap right there that little cap that presses down into that hole will pop out on you when you're trying to put the carburetor back together and you'll fight with it a lot of times so I just like I say I just put a little stake here in three spots and that helps when you push that cap in there it'll stay in then um, new needle and seat that's not you know, I, I'll tell you, I've been through many quadrajets where I have not replaced the needle and seat. I'm testing the float right now to make sure that it's all right. And it's good. It's been floating around in there for about a half hour. Um, very rare do these ever fail. Um, that's about it. Um, I'm starting to on now. <laughs> so that's not a good sign. That means that I'm running out of material. That's really the critical areas. The rest of it is just a matter of can you take your carburetor apart and put it back together? If you can, you're good.
Um, oh, some chokes uh, you have to you have to they have a, a, a safety safety uh, screw on there on that so you're not supposed to adjust the choke and get rid of those because your kit comes with new new clamps so that's something else um, yeah that's it of course you want to check your you want to check your choke pull off to make sure that it's holding vacuum this is an old one but it actually is still alright or no this one's no good I got one that is good though um, yeah that's it those are the critical areas I can't think of anything else but if you have any questions put them in the comments because I'll probably have the answer <laughs> I've done a lot of these carburetors there's an adjustment here this is a minute this is your adjustment for how low the 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 mirroring rods go down into the main jets and if you're out for fuel economy if you want if your quest is fuel economy you can take this plug out of here there's a plug right here on the top that'll allow you access to that adjustment and you can run that adjustment down and that'll drive your metering rods further into your main jets not saying it's that you should I'm saying if you're out for fuel economy and you're and you're you're testing and tuning and that's something you want to play around with there's some adjustments on these carburetors that are this is a very I mean to me this is the best carburetor ever built I, I know I'm gonna hear it all now you know all quadra jets junk and all that I don't I I disagree this carburetor has got adjustments you can adjust the tension on your secondary air door dam here you see that screw right there there's a screw and there's a adjustment right there see that that set screw and you can you can tune your secondary air door tension um, it's a very tunable carburetor uh, back when we were doing a little racing and we weren't so worried about fuel economy I would take this spring here and I would stretch the spring and and I had a whole bunch of them so I could always reverse it I have I still have a pile of these springs that you can you could stretch I have stretched ones I have stock ones this one's stock I'm gonna leave it alone what happens is when you stretch that spring is you have more biasing up up upward biasing on your metering rods that's going to keep them at a higher relative elevation at any given intake vacuum well what does that turn into that turns into that turns into more fuel so if you've got a high performance engine that you want to play around with and you do want to try and get a little bit more power out of it and you think adding fuel will help uh, of course you can change your main jets you can change your secondary metering rods to, to, to smaller ones you know to give you more fuel but that is one quick trick and let me tell you that spring on an Eldorado I had an, I had a Cadillac Eldorado with a 403 in it and between a stretched spring and a non-stretched spring there was five miles to the gallon difference on the freeway it's big but there was also a noticeable power increase with with the stretched spring so you know uh, those are just some some thoughts there that uh, I'm passing along that I've learned over the decades so okay that's it like I say if you all have any questions fire away